What's going on, guys and gals? Chris the Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my garage in today's show, which should be rather short. I'm going to show you six shoes that I picked up this morning. All right, this morning before I process them to, you know, get on the box wall and basically be ready for sale. I'm going to show them to you and with the hopes that you guys can learn something from this show. Anyways, today I spent $80 total, right around 80 bucks for all six of these shoes. And you might be thinking that's kind of a lot of money, but I'll tell you right now when one of these shoes, the right one sells, um, you know, all the money would be back in my pocket. And so I'm hoping to make $500 at the very bare minimum profit after all fees and everything like that on these shoes and i really want to show them to you so anyways hit the like button if you want to learn about how to make some money selling some used shoes that you can find at your everyday thrift stores or garage sales or things like that so today specifically i found these uh looks like six shoes yeah six shoes i found them at uh two thrift stores right so i went to four thrift stores this morning and didn't find anything at two of them but the other two one was a savers and the other one was a goodwill i found these six shoes so We'll kind of go into what I found at the Savers. So I found three pairs of Goodwill, three pairs at Savers. What makes these shoes so special? And some of these are boots. Um, I'll show you right here, right now. Okay, so we'll get to the very first pair. Um, I'll kind of go in, in the order of how I found them, right? I think that's the most important thing to do. Um, these were all found at one store, and then these were all found at Savers. So um, I was at Savers this morning, right after the gym. We'll go, we'll go through some, one of the coolest ones. Um, you know, anytime that you are in a shoe section of Sha uh, Savers, Take a look at the boots, right? They really stick out like a sore thumb, and uh, it's a really quick way to spend um, a very short amount of time to make a high amount of money. So look in the boot section and look for really good brands. So um, here's a really good brand I want to share with you. It's called Danner. You guys should know about this right now, especially for those of you guys out there that maybe have my shoe guide that I built uh, about two months ago, three months ago. Um, Danner is definitely in the shoe guide, and uh, you got to look out for this brand because I find this on a semi-regular basis. Anyways, these right here are Danner Arcadia, or Acadia, not Arcadia, but Acadia. And uh, these are meant to be more of like a tactical slash hiking boot, uh, waterproof, and these are also insulated, which is really important. So you have a lot of good things going for you. A, strong brand right here when I'm trying to resell this shoe. Two, um, it's also a pretty good size, size 12. Uh, three, it is insulated. So inside, anytime a boot is usually insulated, they'll, the boot will kind of brag about it somehow. And it might say 400 grams insulation or 200 grams of insulation or something like that. Um, you know, it'll show it within there. So this one was uh, 200 grams insulation, which is pretty good. 400 would be more. It would be definitely for colder climates. Um, and then the last thing it has going for it is that it's got this really cool, um, and a lot of uh, tactical style boots will have that canvas st uh, style with a leather kind of, uh, you know, main body with canvas upper. So that's real neat as well. Um, they are Gore-Tex and um, that's a huge plus. And they got Vibram undersoles like this. This pair of boots right here, I did use a 20% off coupon. These were, I think, 50, marked at 15 bucks. So you can do the math. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to use some uh, shoe shining uh, type stuff on here. And you can even use a uh, leather conditioner that you would use maybe on a car seat, for example, and you can go on these shoes with that. Uh, it'll make it look a little bit better, less tarnished, although there is a market um, for weathered looking boots. Um, when you look into the tactical solds, um, tactical boot solds on eBay, a lot of the boots are going to be a lot more or less weathered and distressed, right? Even if they are weathered and distressed, they'll definitely be shiny uh, before the person buys them. So people do put a little bit of work into these. And so I suggest doing that as well. It's a $15 um, investment right here. This should sell, if everything goes right, somewhere between 100 and 150 bucks. All right. So these are Acadia shoes made by Danner. All right. Boots. Really, really awesome. Check it out. Someone's saying, where can I get the shoe guide? It is down below. There's a really, really uh, small discount that I put for anybody that watches this show that wants, wants to pick up this guide like right now. So uh, definitely check that out. It's down below. It's the only link. Uh, and hopefully you can enjoy that discount. So that's the first thing that I found at Savers. This was another one I found at Savers, a little bit more unsuspecting. And if you didn't know kind of about this brand, you would have probably, you know, most people would just pass this thing up. So most, this brand is usually known for clothing and it was definitely brought to most people's attention when Justin Timberlake was wearing a lot of their stuff. I've been to the actual store or a store of All Saints. That's the brand of the shoe, believe it or not. And it was a really, really neat, neat uh, store. I went to it in Chicago and I uh, didn't know they made shoes, quite honestly. So I was going through the shoe section 
looking at all wingtips slash brogue style stuff, Derby, Oxford, that kind of stuff. I look for those kind of styles because you can find really, really good brands. And one of the brands I really try to hunt more than anything is Allen Edmonds. But um, outside of Allen Edmonds, there's some, you know, kind of sneaky brands that maybe you wouldn't know about, like John Barbados or All Saints. So um, looked at this, and these are All Saints Spitafields right here. And Spitafields will probably fetch somewhere between like 80 and 100 bucks in used condition for a good size, right? Um, so there's always these off sizes and stuff like that. And you got to know if you have a good size, which is uh, 10, 10 and a half, 11, you know, 11 and a half, 12, that kind of stuff. And most of the stuff that we're looking at today is men's stuff. Um, if you have those good sizes, then that's great. If they're mediums, that's great. You know, even triple E 14s or 13s or 15s. These are, you know, really, really good sizes that people really hunt for on eBay. So take a look for things like this. This is an All Saints Spitfields model. Um, it's kind of classified as like a wingtip slash. There's, a, there's another name to it, but anyways, it kind of eludes me at this point. Really nice looking shoe. A lot of All Saints type of clothing is very weathered looking, so it kind of looks dirty, but it really is the way it's supposed to look. Um, pretty good bottoms. So anytime that you look at a shoe, make sure that uh, you know your heels are nice and even as much as possible. Um, and then if you find them with this kind of wear on the bottom, that's not bad. As long as you have some pretty good edges around here, around the leather, I think you're going to be okay. Always hunt for the size. A lot of really high quality leather shoes might have a size that's only in EU, like uh, European size. So look around for that if you can't find a USA size. And if you look really carefully in this leather, we see a size 44. So that's pretty good. Not too bad. I think a size 44 is going to translate to about a maybe nine and a half or nine, <clears throat> but I haven't looked that up yet. So really cool. Yeah, it looks so old, but it's a really heavy, well-made shoe. In fact, if this was, let's say, my size and a little bit more ankle style, I'd probably keep it because I like this kind of style of stuff. It's really neat. Um, and look at the look at the thickness of the leather that's used here. It's unbelievable how thick it is on this shoe. I mean, it's really thick. So really, really neat stuff. Check it out. You know, these right, right here, 80 to 100 bucks, I would think. So... That's part of the very first deal I did this morning, which was about 30 bucks of the entire thing, right? Oh, maybe 28, something like that. I spent about 80 bucks. I bought other things, but it's not shoe related, so I didn't want to put it on this um, kind of video. But I did buy other things today. It's just that when I took a look at like how much I spent directly on shoes today, it was around $80. And I do expect to make 500 on the low end in pure profit on these things. So I want to share with you guys. Um, all right, so last thing I found at Savers, which is cool, I'm completely, completely unsuspecting. Most people would pass this thing right up. All right, so these right here, you might be thinking, ah, oh, they're wingtips and, uh, you know, the two tone wingtips. Now, here's the thing I almost, you know, as soon as I saw these things, I was like, I'm pretty sure I know what that is, even before I picked it up. So as I picked it up, um, then I noticed the FJ logo on the side. Who wants to guess what these things are and why are they so special? Why did they make it into my shoe guide as well? And why did the shoe in my shoe guide, someone help me out, but I think. Maybe a $13 shoe sold for $279. Uh, the second one I flipped, I distinctly remember that one. It was found at a Goodwill. Uh, that one was around $15 and it sold for like $129 or so. Yeah, so these are FootJoy classics. These are golf shoes um, and typically they come with the brass or gold style um, cleats or sorry, the little kind of grass stake looking thing, grass stakes. I guess that's what they call them anyways. Um, but yeah, these are foot joys classics and a lot of times when I find these things they're in really small sizes Which is very odd. I've never found them in like 12s or 13s or anything like that So maybe I'm missing something but these are size 8 which is the size actually maybe they're sixes I have to take a look at that. But anyways, they're either eights or sixes. They're really small and um, Really neat looking shoe very high quality um, Always when you're looking at foot joy classics I try to hunt out the ones that are two-tone and a lot of the foot joy classics will be two-tone by the way They usually have brown as a primary Kind of color and then maybe uh you know maroon here or olive green like in this one or you might find them really wild colors like um the blue red and white ones which are really cool um but take a look at those on google uh this is going to be a pretty uh, awesome sale pretty quick sale i think um nice nice uh bottoms to them right there and um yeah i, I expect these to go pretty quickly i think my first pair went for uh, it went under like three weeks and the second pair went in like a week. I remember these two that I distinctly like the two that I had found last year. Um, so yeah, pretty nice to find these again. So these were, if I remember correctly, these were, oh yeah, this is the best part of the deal. These were marked at $4.49. I have no idea why. So think about that for a second, $4.49 for these. Um, I fully expect to get around 150 or so, 150 or more for these. 
right here. And if you're like, yeah, there's no way that's gonna happen. Trust me when these things sell. <laughs> I mean, like 150 is kind of like the low end of something like this. So really, really nice. Here's something from inside the feed right now. If you're watching this and it's a live show, it'll stay live on there. Here's a uh, comment that says, Mas Khalif says, Found a pair of FootJoy metal spikes for 13, sold them for $235. So yeah, <clears throat> pretty nice stuff right there. Now, if you find more of the run-of-the-mill FootJoy type stuff, more current day stuff, uh, that they look a lot like Adidas golf shoes and Nike golf shoes, then those are gonna probably shake out somewhere in that 60 to like 100 range, but these are a lot harder to find. So really cool. And yes, they are technically like vintage. So pretty nice right there. Um, so yeah, 150 or so. I'm gonna really shoot for like that 200 mark. Quite honestly, I think I can get them on that, but I think 150 would be like the low end for that thing. So if you guys can hear me, let me make sure. I never did a sound check, so I'm just like really pumped up about these shoes and I wanna teach you guys about them. Um, okay, so I exited that thrift store, go into another thrift store, and I start finding all these shoes and I'm like, wow, this is like super shoe day, this is great. And the, thing, the reason why I like shoes so much is because one, they're easy to inspect <clears throat> as opposed to like a bicycle, which I love flipping bikes, don't get me wrong. Um, shoes are just really easy to inspect. And when there's a flaw, it's pretty, pretty easy, which if you're wondering like, how the hell do I do any of this kind of stuff? Like uh, this you know, completely mystifies me. You gotta look into my shoe guide, trust me. I know I have people that are in this feed right now that have it, so if you have my shoe guide, what do you think about it? Let me know. I, I'm open to all criticism and praise. Go for it right now. I'm not ashamed of this guide. I'm really proud of this guide, and I want you to tell me what you think about it. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, the reason why I like shoes is because they're extremely easy, okay, to um, you know inspect. Number two, they're really easy to ship off. You know, typically they go in boxes that are. I'll show you right here. You know, there's some boxes. I mean, a lot of shoes. Over half of them will go into the USPS priority shoe box right here. I got a pair of Sperry Duck boots in this one right here. Um, outside of that, they're going to go into larger boxes. Um, that'll fit, you know, things like those boots, for example. Now, that obviously can't fit in those boxes, but it's not hard to find boxes for shoes. That's why I like them, shoes and boots, should I say. Um, I just put a pair of Hunter boots into a linear type box that was a bit about this, you know, this long, which wasn't really hard to find either. So that's another reason, reason why I like it. You're not really hunting around for too many box sizes or anything like that. And then the last reason is everyone needs shoes. Shoes are like in every freaking thrift store across, you know, east to west coast in America. Um, they're just everywhere. And I found them at swap meets, I find them at thrift stores, garage sales, and it's just a really good thing to look for. So if you're not trained up on shoes and you're scared, um, you're missing out on a lot of money, 100%. I promise you right now, you're missing out on a lot of money. So anyways, go get my shoe guide down below. Small discount, I have to toot it. Um, I wanna read some things about this shoe guide real quick. Um, here we go. <laughs> Philip, Philip Voyer says the shoe guide is the shoe Bible. Christine Lapa, the, shoe, the guide is awesome. Tons of photos, lots of good info, and a great investment. So really cool. Let me know your guys, uh, you know, your shoe flips. I want to see that really quick. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about what I found at Goodwill. And uh, this is also a brand I mentioned in my shoe guide right here. Um, these are, what do you guys think these are? God, they're hideous. Aren't they just so ugly? Look at these ugly shoes. What are these? Now, I know people like... <laughs> totally saw the brand. You should know this. I mean, this brand's pretty obvious just by looking at it. Ah, I think I showed it. Um, before I get to what the brand is, there's a question. Where do I get my boxes from? So the USPS uh, shoe box comes from USPS. It's free, It's pri but you have to ship everything out priority that goes in that box. It looks like this right here. So I'm about to box all these things up. Looks like this, all right? You get these for free right off of uh, you know, USPS.com. This one's called the Shoebox August 2015. That's just what it's called. Um, but if you take a look at it, it's under the priority uh, shipping stuff that's free. So I think you can get in quantities of 10 and 25. So order those things to your door. They'll get there fast, but you have to ship it out priority. Now, things like boots and things like that are a little bit bigger. Um, I will hunt around for the best rate. Sometimes it's FedEx ground. Sometimes it's FedEx three day, it just really depends. But I also live in Austin, Texas, kind of like the center part of the country. So search your shipping uh, options through that uh, because you know it might be cheap for me on one thing, but you might have a cheaper thing any other way. So uh, yeah, so here we go. <laughs> um, here we go. So uh, Mephisto, these are walking shoes. They're typically known as walking shoes. They're not really hiking or casual. They're typically a walking shoe brand. Really, really good condition. Mephisto's typically when I see these at thrift stores, they are just 
walked to all hell, right? They're just completely worn out. Um, and you can you can pretty much tell when you look to see if they are because it's pretty obvious. Like they're pretty worn out. These are in really good condition. You just look at the bottom and you'll just know. Now this undersole can be sometimes deceiving because even some heavily walked in ones might have perfect wear like this all over the shoe. But this one right here I know are in really good condition. I'm, I'm looking at some really good edges right here on the nubs. Uh, nothing's been rounded out pretty hard. It looks awesome. They're size 14s, which is good. That means someone with a really big foot that might not be able to get these in stores, you know, or having trouble ordering them, we'll find these on eBay. These are suede leather. Um, basically, uh, all you have to do to, when you do Mephisto is to put uh, runoff and like air something. What does it say here? Air, air jet system. And then some are also called like air bags or something like that. Yeah, this one's called an air bag system right there. It says air bag system, but it's still classified as a runoff air jet. So that's what they have inside of them. That's all you really have to put in the listing is like Mephisto, white, uh, you know, walking, runoff, air jet, uh, the size, um, the width, and then really good pictures like this. Here's a second pair that I found. Both of these were uh, $18 out the door at Goodwill. And these are really good walking shoes. So they look hideous. I mean, they look like almost like Reebok classics. But anyways, this should sell for around uh 90 to 100 i would think the white one would and then the brown one has a market that's about four times as large as the white one on the market so this one will probably sell for around 1 110 i would think but yeah pretty nice stuff very unsuspecting kind of shoe kind of looks like a skateboard shoe it's really ugly so yeah check it out pretty nice um and then the last one which i think is gonna be the home run of the day besides the actual foot joy classics right here i think this is gonna be probably one of the home runs so you have to understand this style of boot. It's been in for like a decade. Um, people call them ankle chukka, you know, that kind of stuff. But this style of boot is super, super in right now, right? So you can have cap toe, you can have just like this, you can have a wing tip, it doesn't really matter. People like the ankle style of boots. Um, if you have uh, belting like this, that's great. Sometimes they only have three eyelets on each side, lace up. Um, sometimes they'll have elastic on the side, so you can just slip right in them. And sometimes they'll have zippers um, on the side and the insides right here. They're made by many different brands, but this general style of boot is really, really wanted right now. So definitely look at that. As soon as I picked these up, I felt them for a second. I was like, this is good stuff. Flip them over. What's the brand, guys? Guess the brand right now. It's gonna be kind of hard to guess, but you might get it. Um, and you might be thinking, isn't that kind of weird how like hangs like that? No, that's just part of it. Um, it's unbuckled right now. And it's just one of those things I would think it's going to be kind of an annoying boot to wear. And if it was size 12, I'd probably have kept it because I totally want a pair like this, but I just don't want to spend two to $500 for them, you know? And so brands such as Alden, um, there's a good bazillion brands that are really good. John Barbados, Cole Haan, uh, Wolverine. There's so many. Allen Edmonds, they make this like higher style, ankle style of boot um, as an offering to their, uh, you know, people that love their shoes, their actual low cut shoes. And so what's the brand on this one? <laughs> this is not John Varveda, so I wish it was. It's, I wish it was Fry too. This is almost just as good, honestly. Um, it's a brand that gets drowned out a lot, though, but with the right kind of shoe, it's perfectly fine. So anyways, yeah, pretty nice. Coach is another good brand you want to be looking out for. Um, God, there's even another one, Lucchese. That's a good one. Believe it or not, Lucchese makes boots that kind of look like this. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this one right here is made by can you see it there we go polo so yeah polo ralph lauren really nice um i look for boots that are anything like this polo ralph lauren the chukka style boots um are really good sellers as well but really neat really good guesses a lot of people are guessing some really good brands so here's some of the brands that i'm seeing people guess fry it's a really good brand red wing yep two boot uh adam derrick new york yep that's a good one kohan good decent decent brand kohan can get drowned out sometimes john varvedos almost always really good um yeah so good guesses guys this is a polo uh boot this one's called the newent jodhpur really weird name um the market on that boot is somewhere between 120 and 160 but those are sizes that are like very weird and stuff like this. This is a size 11, all right? So this is a very wanted size on a boot that's probably not made anymore. So I'm gonna shoot for the 200 mark on this. And uh, you know, that's one of the things that comes with shoe experience is you have to read markets, right? Just because maybe the velocity is low, meaning that the sold market on eBay is low 
It might be low for a reason, right? It might be low because there's nobody that has good sizes out there that wants to put them up for sale. So when someone comes up with a, you know, with a boot that's a really good size, that's in great condition. So I showed you guys the bottom. We can see right here, you know, we have nice, nice edges, nice flat edges around everything, almost like a 90 degree angle everywhere you look. That's a good sign of a boot that was well taken care of and used very gently. So, yeah, when you read markets, you have to be really careful how you price these things. Because if you price it at 120, that thing would probably be out the door in like three days. So I have to be very careful because I don't want to undercut myself too much. But I also don't want this thing sitting around um, waiting for a super premium all year long. right? I do want to move this thing within a month or two. And I really do think 200 bucks is pretty fair. It would be the highest selling one in the market. But then again, anything that previously sold in the market was never as good as this size or as good as this condition. So that's how you have to read markets. And you can, if you read markets per <laughs> perfectly you know you can definitely make more money on your stuff and definitely undercut uh, stop undercutting yourself and really make the time and effort you know really pay off for you know studying the shoe studying the shoe guide um, all the experience comes down to you know when you pull the trigger but it also comes down to when you list the item and when you list it properly so anyways um, I guess that's pretty much it that's pretty much the video I'm gonna hang around for like three or four questions. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, let me talk about a couple of things about my shoe guide real quick. There is a small discount down below for anyone that's interested in unlocking that income stream. I spent months at a coffee shop building this shoe guide. It's, ton it's got tons of pictures, tons of all kinds of stuff in there, like you know shoe checks, um, how to spot quality shoes, um, and then genres upon genres upon genres of shoes that you can learn about, including boots. Um, and then within each genre, I show you my best flip within the genre, right? So if we're looking at uh, ankle or chucko style boots, you'll see, I believe, a Lucchese boot that's in there that's sold for two something that was found at a Goodwill for, I think, like 20 bucks or something like that. Anyways, tons of pictures in that. I don't, I don't believe on building guides without pictures. I think pictures are a very easy way to communicate things to people to where they can learn the income stream at their own pace. And I think a guide is still one of those best ways to do it. So that's why I built it, spent many uh, months doing it. And uh, there's also a section on how to list the boots or the shoes, the best pictures to take, the best angles to take, uh, boots and shoes to avoid and brands to avoid. So I think it's really chock full of information for me to even shed you know, a little bit on this uh, broadcast about how good it is. I don't think I can really emphasize how good it is. So go check it out. It's the only link down below. If you're interested in unlocking that stream, Enjoy that small discount. Um, here we go. Some okay. Here we go. So OGC says, "Why do I think size 11 are the best men's sizes on eBay?" So I think 11 through 13. Okay, so size 11, 12, 13, 10 and a half, and tens. Like that's about where I see the best markets. So I've been sh selling shoes for like 14 years now, right? Maybe more. Um, and I have found that 10 and the half sizes. I don't, okay, 10, 10 and a half are really good. 11 is really good, but then 11 and a half like slows down real hard. 12 is really good. 12 and a half like slows down really, really hard. And then 13s, right? And I've never sold a 13 and a half anything. And then, yeah, so 10, 10 and a half sell great. Sometimes even nine and a half, but um, the half sizes kind of cease right after 10. Like it's just a really finicky buyer situation at that point. But 10 and a half is like, I don't know what it is. But 10, 10 and a half is great. I find that mediums, which are, uh, you know, Ds and uh, they'll always say like a D or an M. Those are the better thing to have. But then again, uh, one of these boots is a narrow like that Danner boot right there. And it doesn't, you know, stop me from buying the boot whatsoever because there's someone out there is not looking for a medium or a wide. And they want a narrow. And Danner, you know, probably had... 300 boots sold in the past 90 days on eBay. So, you know, it's a really good thick market and the velocity is there. So I decided to pop into those. I don't think I've ever turned down a good pair of Danners anyway. So, yeah. So 10.5, 11, um, 12, 13. I just don't, those are really good sizes because majority of men are somewhere within that, that ballpark. That's the way I kind of see it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Let me know. Um, Heather, the reseller says Al Bundy was a really good, sh great shoe salesman. I'm telling you, that's funny you say that. Cause I actually watched some of the bloopers or the funny parts of that, like a month ago. It's pretty crazy. Now, if you were to air that show, there's no way it would like fly through TV. Um, it was just really raw for back in the eighties, but now it's like, everything's too PC and no one would ever want that show anymore. Uh, I still like it, but, 
Um, Andrew Mangels, great, great, great question. How in depth is the shoe guide on dress shoes? I already sell shoes, but I struggle so much with Allen Edmonds or Johnson Murphy and such. All right, so here's the thing, and I disclose it in the shoe guide. Dress shoes and formal shoes are one of the smallest genres that I resell when it comes to shoes, and it's because there's a lot to look through. Okay, so I go through. I go when I go to a shoe section, I try to get an easy kill, and those are shoes that are just like, yep, that's definitely worth some good money. Blah blah blah. Now, if you go to every shoe section in America and look through every single casual and formal shoe, you're going to spend hours upon hours flipping over shoes because that's pretty much like the large percentage outside of tennis shoes that gets donated to those kind of places are formal and casual shoes or yeah, formal dress, formal, those kind of things. So I don't like that genre as much as I probably should, but it's also because it's very time consuming, right? It's also like, I don't like the genre of Nike as much because I don't like flipping over Nikes. Like, you know, if, if you're flipping over Nikes, then you could be you could be arguing like, oh, well, Polo is a great brand when it comes to clothing. You know how many Polo garments are out there that are not worth anything? And you know how many Nike shoes are out there that are not even worth your time? Like 90%. There's so many out there. So I would much rather hone in my skills on the things that absolutely do sell, that stick out like a sore thumb, and that's what I go for, right? Because I don't want to spend my entire hours and weeks reselling. I like to do other things, but I like to get good, clean, quality kills like this, right? And that's what I call them. They're little kills, right? I, I killed it. Cool. Um, so, yeah, that's the reason why in the shoe guide there's not as much of the formal and dress. And I disclose that because there's a lot that's drowning out there. There's like Giorgio Brutini. There's Johnson Murphy. There's Floorshine. There's Floorshine Imperials. There's... There's so many ones to go through, and then there's typically a sort of when you get it into your possession, you have to sometimes buff them out and like you have to spend some time on them and make them look all good. You have a much more finicky buyer when you deal with those kind of shoes. And plus, you might even have a buyer that wants to use them just for like a formal or something and then return them back to you. So there's all kinds of weird things that go on, and that's the reason why I don't like messing with it too much. Although, I don't ever turn down a good pair of Allen Edmonds or things like that. I just don't go hunting around for them as most people might think. <laughs> Heather the reseller, Bonafide deserves a lot more subscribers than 32K. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't know, hopefully. Um, okay, here we go. Do I ever sell 5.11 tactical shoes? It's funny you say 5.11 because I just bought a 5.11 bag today. That was awesome. It's gonna probably make me about 50 to 60 bucks locally. Anyways, um, do I ever sell 5.11 tactical shoes? I have before. They're not the greatest sellers. But then again, uh, 5.11 as a brand has some really good stuff. It's mostly tactical gear, a lot of Molly type stuff, things with like Velcro and anyways, very modular type of uh, connections to all, most of their stuff and their pants are cool, but it doesn't get as much resale as most people think unless you have like the jackets or something like that. Like you, you have, or the bags, certain bags, like rolling bags are really good and you know, high dollar, but a lot of 5.11 stuff can get drowned out too. So. You know, if you're looking around for only 5.11 stuff, you know, it's kind of tough. And for, to find a really good pair of 5.11, any kind of tactical boot, for some reason, when I look at tactical boots at a thrift store or a garage sale, I mean, when I look for them, A, they're really hard to find. And B, when I find good tactical boots or when I find good tactical boots, it's so rare because there's so many other brands that have made them that are not that good. And it's not even worth picking up. So sometimes it can drown itself out just by that. Um, but yeah, a good pair of tactical boots. I mean, there's just some decent brands. I'm trying to think here. Um, 5.11 isn't bad. There's some other ones that I like to look for. Danner's really good. Um, Solomon makes some really good ones as well. I just don't go out of my way trying to look for them. That's all. Um, <clears throat> okay, what else we got here? Do I ever sell bike seats? I do. I do. But usually when I sell bike seats, I'm looking for a really good Sele Italia bike seats or I'm looking for Brooks and things like that. Um, smash the like button from Matt Jackson. Aloha from Hawaii. Do I sell a lot of marmot? I wouldn't say a lot of marmot, but I have one or two marmot things on my eBay store right now. Um, one's a Gore-Tex jacket, and the other one I think is a ring coat, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Oakley Tactical. Yeah, there's, there's a good another brand right there, Oakley. Um, okay, so here we go. Judoka84. Judoka Are golf shoes and sports cleats 
a good flip. Another place where things get drowned out pretty hard. If you're gonna go to golf shoes and stuff like that, I would look for higher end Adidas, higher end Tiger Woods-ish type Nikes, and then look for definitely the brand Foot Joy. And there's even one more brand after that that I like. Um, what is it called? Ah, it's a golf brand. Um, anyways, it, it, it eludes me right now. But uh, I think it's title. No, that's not that. It, it's another brand. Anyways, um, but yeah, I look a lot of times for Foot Joy. I think that's one of the best brands to look for in the golf. Um, realm and a lot of them are going to you know be that 40 to maybe 80 dollars resale value and then if you get the classics you're in the hundred dollars more category pretty quick um okay so i think that's pretty much it guys if you're interested in learning a lot about a large realm of shoes go check out my shoe guides down below it doesn't hone in on any one super specific genre within shoes or boots but it will it will show you so much that the next time you're around shoes and boots, you'll really start to understand like what I look for and what's good marketable stuff, you know? And that's really what it comes down to because um, you should never be personally attached to any of the things that you resell. You should be looking at the markets and trying to find things that, you know, will sell pretty quickly so you can turn over your money faster and faster and get whatever things you want out of that money, you know? It's all about profit in the end if you have, you know, oh, the latest and greatest Nike or this, or it's a Reebok, but it, you know, or it's, it's this or that. If you're personally attached to it somehow and you think it's super cool, the market's going to dictate whether it's super cool or not, not you, right? So the market is the ultimate thing. So when you look at my shoe guy, that's typically like over the 14 years, some of the best markets that I found and the ones that I want to play in, right? There's so many other markets that I could be playing in, like women's shoes, um, like only the Nike market, um, the, the hype wear market. I just like the markets that are in that book because they've rewarded me year over year over year with good stable profits. And um, so I decided to make a guide about it. Go check it out, it's down below. There's a small discount on that if you want to save a little bit of money. And I hope to see you guys on the other side. We're gonna be making more shoe videos here and there as I find them, but I thought today was a very peculiar kind of day where I found six really, really good pairs of shoes and I only spent maybe an hour and 45 minutes thrifting today total. So I thought I'd definitely make a video for you guys. I'll see you on the other side on the next Bonafide Hustler video. Take it easy, goodbye.